Hey, hi everyone, this is Vivek and welcome to the second episode of Beautiful Greedy Ideas. Now, in this particular episode, we'll talk about de arrangements specifically, how to generate de arrangements as an idea in itself, right? So let's straight away move to the problem. What is the problem at hand? You are given an array A and you have to generate another array B, which is number one, a permutation of A, which means the elements remain the same. So you have to pick elements from over here, five, you can place it somewhere over here, three, you can place over here, one you can take and place over here and something like this, right? So you have to take the elements and places in the new array such that A of i is not equal to B of i after placing them. So you cannot pick this one and place it over here because in that case, at this position, they will both become equal. So what you have to do is you have to just find out any such permutation of A such that A of i is not equal to B of i, which is actually called as the arrangement of the array, right? Now, a natural question that comes with that, obviously, like if you can generate it, generate that array. And if it doesn't, like if it is not possible, which might be the case, you have to print, okay, no, it's not possible to generate this, right? So like there is both possibilities that maybe it's not possible to generate a derangement, but if it's possible, print me one of those examples. Now, in many such problems where you have to print, what I have generally observed is you generally have a strategy which generates the solution and if you can figure that out you can also answer the second part which is if it is possible or not right so there is a general strategy that you have to think about and if you have that idea in your mind then you can answer too as well as you can use that same setup to generate the solution b as well so that is what we are, will learn today so for simplicity for like making this problem a little simpler and to understand things step by step the way you should think about is, okay, we are going to permute A to B, right? How should you think about this? You should, you can permute A to B. So what if A was just already sorted or like sorted by their frequencies, like all fours comes first, then threes comes next, then twos come over here, then one, five come over here, right? So all elements of A's are sorted by their frequencies now. So all the most frequent elements comes first, then the second most frequent, then the third most frequent, then fourth most frequent. We can sort by that value possibly. Let's say let's say it's it's possible to sort by that. And in actuality, we'll not, not even need to do that. But then let's say it's sorted by that, right? Now my question to you is from this particular array, how would you generate a new array such that it's a derangement? A very good strategy that you can try to think about is this one, obviously I cannot place it over here, over here, over here, over here. Maybe you can place it over here, right? Because that one is like something that cannot be placed at its own value, right? So you have to find the first position where it's not present and then place it over here. Then naturally, even for this one, you have already placed over here and these are already ones. So you can, you can place it over here. Similarly, this one you have to place over here, this one you have to place over here. Then for this three, you can go ahead and try and place on this side. But then since we are trying to keep things on the right hand side, maybe it seems natural, right? That we can try and place threes over here and then twos over here and then five over here. And suddenly you see, we do have a derangement, isn't it? I mean, we have an array which doesn't really have any position which is common. Weird, why is this working? I mean, and is this the solution? Well, not really. We had this array. We didn't want to dearrange this array. We wanted to dearrange this array. But then this is in a magical sense, in it, magical in itself, right? That, okay, we are able to shift things maybe by certain value and then everything is, is just falling in its own place. How do you think about this at a next level? So if you shift it by some value, what is that value? Maybe you are shifting the first index the maximum frequency, let's say, max frequency. If you shift it by that much, and in fact, every position by that much, we suddenly have a B array, which is perfectly dearranged. Okay. But then there is a next challenge. We were not asked about this B dash, right? Or A dash. We were asked about this A, print me a dearrangement of this A, such that this B is a dearrangement of this A. We know that there is a strategy. Maybe this strategy works. But then if it works, we can find a derangement for A dash, but we wanted to find for A. How do we go over here? How do you generate B from this? If you, if let's suppose the strategy works. Well, if I had to think about it, I would think about positions, right? Why? Because obviously these elements that are present in the original array 
are just getting shuffled in some way and their orders can be maintained where they were present in the original array, right? That, okay, zero, one was present over here, this one was coming from over here, this one was coming from over here and so on, okay? Now, when we shifted this, we shifted this one over here, we shifted this one over here, this one over here, this one over here, right? So, in a sense, we are saying that for this A dash, this B dash is a dearrangement and we are placing for this one, we are going to place that one over here. So, this one, which is which was originally at zero, needs to go to the place where three was present, okay? So, three was present at two. So, this one, which was present at zero, should ideally go to the place where three was present, which is at two. Let's try to do that. One should go to the place three. Sorry, place two in this case, index two. Originally, index two was for three. So, one goes over here. This one goes at six. This one goes at seven. This one goes at nine. This three goes at four. Because in the a dash array, this position was taken by 2 comma 4, right? But then if you know that b dash is a permutation, so 3 should be at that place where 2 was there and 2 was at actually at 4. We have that in the sorted condition. So we can place 3 at 4 now. So 3 goes over here. 3 goes at 8. 3 goes at 1. 3 goes at 0. And then you have 2s and 5. So 2 goes at 3, 2 goes at 5. Uh, 5 goes at 10 okay and now if you see what has happened is suddenly you have 1 not matching with this 5 not matching with this 3 not matching with this 1 not matching with this 2 not matching with this and you can check and you can go ahead and check everything 3s are with 1s now 2s are with 3s okay 5s are with um, threes are with ones and one is with five. So all of the elements are different and we somehow generated the arrangement for this. What Vivek, what is this magical set setup that you have just done so that it's finding us the solution? Why is this even working? Okay, we'll get to that. Don't worry, we'll get to that. Obviously, I'm not going to leave you with just a solution because in my channel, I don't really promote learning or memorizing solutions. We need to know why it's working and how does how do you kind of think about the framework so that you can solve this problem on your own next time, right? So how would you think about this problem on the first step? Basically, once you have a strategy in such constructive problems, in such greedy problems, once you have a strategy, you have to check will this always work, right? I mean, let's think about that already frequency sorted thing, right? Will this always work? If you have, let's suppose, five elements over here, you shift this five elements so that for the next five elements, so I have this as the original array and I've just pasted it again so that we can see all the elements that are getting shifted, they would be coming over here. So instead of keeping it over here, I'm just keeping it a new array in this side. So just copied it up. And we can see that, okay, if you shift, if, the, if you take these five elements, if you shift it by five, which was the max frequency, these are fine, three gets matched with two, that's fine. And then this two will come in front and it's getting matched with one, 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 three, three, one, three, one. So they are fine, right? What if we have, let's suppose six elements. I have just introduced one more one, okay? So now if you shift, you see that these are fine, but then suddenly there were six ones and this one, one will wrap around and will come over here, which is, which we can see over here directly. And it's getting matched with the one and they are the same. So they are not a dearrangement. Hmm. So something is failing, which means most probably we don't have a solution every time with us. How do we check that? How do we check whether this is going to work every time then, right? Well, think about it. If there is an element which is present more than half the times, like there are, it's more than, there were exactly 11 elements. This has now six frequency. For the six elements, you have to place them at positions other than six elements, other than those six positions where they are originally present. Now, if there are, if there are already six values taken and you have more than half already covered by that itself, will we ever get the chance to place these six elements? No, we will not have enough positions at all. So we'll have only five positions left and they will not be sufficient, which means we will not have a solution for this case, right? 
So whenever we have more than half elements uh, being the same value, most probably we cannot derange it. Or else, this strategy always works, right? Because if you see, this will never wrap around from the last end side. And then since the biggest chunk is not getting collided, the next smaller chunks will always have more buffer with it because the biggest chunk is there in front of it. So they are adding more buffer to it only. So they will also not go wrap around and just get collided, right? So if the, the only problem can happen with the max frequency thing. So if the max frequency one is safe, we are safe with having a solution. So this is the strategy that we will work with. Just to make the implementation way more simpler, we will do one small tweak. Instead of sorting it by just frequency, maybe we can just sort it naturally. Why, why bring all threes in front? We know that sifting is gonna work, right? So if there are threes over here and then twos over here, or there are twos over here and then threes over here, if the shift is gonna work, it's gonna work for both of them. Why? Because it's just a compartment moving by a certain steps. It's over here or it's over here, it doesn't matter. If it's shifted by K, it's not colliding. That means there is always a solution that you have. So in this case, we can just sort it naturally, which is easy to do in terms of code. And you can find out, hey, uh, this is over here. Three needs to go to the position of zero. Three needs to go to the position of three. Three needs to go, go to the position of you. So this is the array which you form by sorting these pairs together with the positions by the natural value order. And then over here, you just do this K shift thing. Okay, you do the K shift thing. How do you do that? You basically take the maximum frequency, count the maximum frequency, which is three, uh, four, sorry, and then shift it by four. So this four elements come to the front and then you move this all the way back and then you see, okay, three should go to the place where, so this is the new dearranged array, but the indexing are short. The original array was like this. So three should be the going to the place where zero was present. So three should go over here, three should go over here. Three should go to the place where five was present. So three should go over here. So this three, these three is coming over here. This three is coming over here. Then five is coming at 10. So five is coming at 10. Then uh, one is coming at four, one is coming at four, one is coming at eight. One is coming at uh, two, six, right? And then uh, seven, nine, twos are coming and then last three is coming at one. So everything is sorted, right? So that's a very, very clean code that you can implement. I've implemented a small like section over here so that you can understand how this code might work. You can just simply maintain a map which will have the frequency and uh, just to find the maximum frequency, you can do it without that too. But then I'll leave that as an exercise for you guys. Uh, we can just find out the pair. This is the A array, initial A array, the value comma I. You find the max frequency by going through the map and finding the max frequency. You just do it in the same step as well, but then just kept it in separate part so that you can see this neatly. Then we sort the A array by the value. And then we know that we have to shift everything by the max frequency. So we just, for the ith element, we place it at i plus this okay and modern so that it wraps around okay so we have this as a setup for ourselves and then we know this is the final answer we can just so now when we sort it a array is actually a dash now what we have generated is b dash so final answer is nothing but the value over here goes to the the same indexes a dot second so you put that over here now assume that this always has a solution. A very, very simple check that you can introduce is what if mass frequency is greater than n by two? So if two into max frequency is greater than n, you can assume that you don't have a solution. Yeah. You can write that check as well. But then this should be the way to generate it, right? I'm assuming that you always have a generation possible. So that will be all as an idea for this particular problem. I hope you enjoyed uh, learning this particular idea. I'll keep making more videos. I'll keep adding more and more things. Sorry for the small delay for those who have been following my channel, um, have been traveling for some time and uh, there was uh, some amount of like gap. I had put up a segment tree series. You can check that out. Um, this particular video was got delayed because th the earlier video had some sh some issue in the audio. So I had to re-record it. That's what I'm doing right now. And then I'll upload this for you guys. I'll keep creating more content. I'm planning to kind of start a new thing for you guys. So stay tuned on this channel. I'll kind of post another one to talk about that too. So see you all. Have a great day. Keep learning. Bye-bye.